All right, Shalom. I want to start off by giving all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bashimi Abishai, double honors to the apostles and elders at Great Millstone, honors to you, Akim, teaching the truth and sincerity, and Shalom, peace be upon the house of Israel that's scattered throughout the four corners of the earth that's a part of the hopeful elect. Today, I want to go into uh, a commentary on this video called American Indians are still getting a raw deal and how you North American Indians and indigenous people of Central and South America you are part of the 12 tribes of the house of Israel the scriptures refer to you the Lord sheep of the house of Israel because you don't know your true biblical identities but according to biblical prophecy you are the chosen people of the great spirit also known as the Heavenly Father, okay? Also, his true Hebrew name is Yahweh, okay? And his son's name is Yahweh Shai. Now, you indigenous people of North, South, Central America, the reason why you're in the conditions that you're in, and you're suffering oppression, is because you have the curses of Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, the 15th verse on down. And until you repent, and come back to your true nationality, and come back onto your true God, you will continue to suffer and be in oppression and suffer under the hands of your enemy, the so-called white Caucasian race, okay? Now, I'm going to do a commentary on this video. We've all heard about how many bad things the U.S. government did to American Indians in the past. But what about today? Like most people, the only time I hear about today's American Indians is when people are outraged about sports mascots or team names, like the Washington Redskins. Deuteronomy 28, verse 15, But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy power, to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes and command which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Verse 37, And thou shalt become an astonishment, a proverb, and a byword among all nations, whether thy Lord shall lead thee. Because religion, originally we're from the land of Israel. That's our homeland. You so-called indigenous people of North, Central, and South America are natives of Israel. But because we broke the Lord's statutes commandments, this curse of being a, pro a byword, a proverb among all nations is upon us. That's why you're the face or the laughing stock, or you are on the names of teams and called redskins or wetbacks among all the nations, okay? Because these are the curses of the Heavenly Father that's upon us. But sports teams' names are the least of Indians' problems. Did you know that Indians have the highest rate of poverty of any racial group in America? Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 16. Cursed shall thou be in the city, and cursed shall thou be in the field. Cursed shall be thy basket and thy store. All right, so the scriptures say, Cursed shall thou be in the city, and cursed shall thou be in the field. Cursed shall be thy basket and thy store. Because we're not going to prosper and flourish in agriculture. We're not going to prosper and flourish in business. We're not going to flourish off the land. We're not going to flourish off of any things of dealing with financial gain. All right? This is the reason why we're impoverished. This is the reason why you indigenous people are impoverished. Did you know that alcoholism is more common among Indian youth than among youths in any other ethnic group? Habakkuk 2 and 15, woe unto him that giveth his neighbor drink, that puttest thy bottle to him, that makest him drunken also, that thou mayest look on their nakedness. Now the scriptures say, woe unto him that giveth his neighbor drink. Woe means lamentation, all right? Lamentation or weeping or destruction be unto him that giveth his neighbor drink. Because when the colonialists came over here, they traded with the North American Indians and indigenous people of Central and South America with different liquors and beers. And it says that put us thy bottle to him and make us him drunken also. So the reason why you're drunken, all right, because the so-called white man was the one that gave you these liquors, all right, 
and you're drinking because you're in a poverty state. You're drinking because you're in a low state. You lost your power. You lost your land. All right. So it says that thou mayest look on their nakedness, meaning their, their sin. All right. Look us on your shame. Nakedness represents shame. All right. And look at the Native Americans. Y'all not in the glory that y'all used to be in. You're not in the stature or the uh, position that you used to be in. You used to be a mighty and glorious people. But when the so-called white man conquered y'all, now y'all are shameful people. You're destroying yourselves by the way it is liquor. All right? Group, did you know that the rate of child abuse among Indians is twice as high as the national average? Until I visited Indian reservations for my book, The New Trail of Tears, I didn't know any of this. What was at the root of these terrible problems, I wondered. And the deeper I dug, the more I realized that between the 19th century and today, nothing has changed. It's still the government. The two main agencies that oversee the activities of Indians who live on reservations are the Bureau of Indian Affairs, or BIA, and the Bureau of Indian Education, or BIE. Education, economic development, tribal courts, road maintenance, agriculture, and social services, the federal government basically funds and controls all of it. It's no wonder Indians say BIA stands for bossing Indians around. Together, these two agencies have combined budgets of $3 billion per year and have 9,000 employees. That's one employee for every 111 Indians on a reservation. Of that $3 billion per year, the BIE uses $850 million of it to educate 42,000 students. That's more than $20,000 per student, compared to a national average of $12,400 per student. Plenty of other federal agencies also have programs for Indians. For instance, the Indian Health Service had a 2015 budget of over $4.6 billion. And yet, there are widespread and documented reports of nurses being unable to administer basic drugs, of broken resuscitation equipment, and of unsanitary medical facilities. Obviously, inadequate funding isn't the problem. The billions of dollars that the federal government spends on Indians every year hasn't made their lives better. In fact, by most measures of economic and social health, the lives of American Indians are only getting worse. Deuteronomy 28, verse 43, The stranger that is within thee shall get above thee very high, and thou shalt come down very low. The stranger, being the so-called white man, the Caucasian man, Esau, according to the Bible, he shall get uh, above thee very high. That's why he flourished when he came to this land. He prospered. And thou shalt come down very low. That's why y'all was put on reservations. That's why y'all in progress till, still to this day. That's why y'all waters are defiled and, and poisoned. That's why you don't get the best of the land. Okay? And this is why you're not getting no service or no help from the government. All right? That's because you're brought down very low. He shall lend to thee, and thou shalt not lend to him. He shall be the head, and thou shalt be the head. He shall lend to thee. It's talking about all the assistant programs that is given to you North American Indians, and you indigenous people of Central and South America. All right? He's in the power to give to you, but you're not in the power to give to him. All right? You're not in the position to give to him, even though this is your land. All right? It says, he shall be the head. And thou shalt be the tail. He's in rulership. And you're the ones that's in subjection. You're the ones that's in captive. All right. Moreover, all these curses shall come upon thee and shall pursue thee and overtake thee till thou be destroyed. Because thou hearkenest not unto the voice of the Lord thy power to keep his commandment and his statutes which he commanded thee. And they shall be upon thee for a sign, for a wonder. And upon thy seed forever. Because these curses and what we're going through today goes all the way back during the time of Moses. All right. When you read the Bible about the story of Moses and the Lord gave him this, the, the covenant and the Lord's statutes commandments to give to the nation of Israel. These curses go all the way back then. And they're happening to us to this day. That's how we know that you indigenous people of North, South, Central and South America are the children of Israel. Because thou servest not the Lord thy power with joyfulness, 
and with gladness of heart for abundance of all things. Therefore shalt thou serve thy enemies, which the Lord shall bring against thee in hunger and in thirst and in nakedness and in want of all things. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. All right. So you went from gathering your own food, your own buffalo, gathering your own water, gathering and making your own clothes. All right. You went from sustaining your own type of living, living on your own conditions, living on your own land, waking up whenever you want, teaching your kids your language, your heritage, your traditions to having to go to your oppressor. All right. The Caucasian man, which is known as Esau for food. Now you have to go to Esau, the Caucasian man for water, clean drinking water. You have to go to the Caucasian man. All right. Known as Esau for clothing. All right. For the want of all things, whatever you need to sustain yourself in your living condition, you have to go to the so-called white man. You're not able to do it on your own terms. Because you're under his jurisdiction, under his law. Okay? And this is all the curses that was put upon us. And it says, he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he hath destroyed thee. And a lot of you Native Americans, you was put in chains. All right? You was put on in bondage. All right? That's why you're on reservations. You went from owning the whole North America, Central America, and South America. To living on reservations, which is also known as projects, a, 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 a so-called Indian project, all right? You don't own the whole North America no more, Central America. You was pushed onto reservations, man. Aside from issues of culture, the only way out of this morass is economic growth. This is where this woman got it wrong. Economic growth is not the solution of your problems. The solution to your problems is coming back to your heritage, coming back to the Lord's statute of commandments and the true living power, the great spirit, which his real name in the Hebrew is Yahweh, and believe upon his son, Yahweh Shai. Okay, that's the solution. Mark chapter one, verse 15 and saying the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of the most high is at hand. Repent ye and believe the gospel. All right. The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of the most high is at hand. Okay. The time fulfilled, meaning we are at the end times. We are at the end of this Caucasian man, Esau, rulership. We are at the end of his nightmare. We are at the end of oppression. We are at the end of slavery. Okay. The kingdom of the most high is at hand. The kingdom of the Most High is when you North American Indians, you indigenous people of North, Central, and South America are going to be in rulership. You're going to be in power again, under your power, under your God, okay? It says the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye. Repent means to look back sorrowful, okay? Turn back to your power. Come back to the Lord's statutes, commandments, the Ten Commandments, and the rest of the 613 laws. All right. That's written in the Old Testament. It says, believe the gospel. The gospel is the good news. The good news, meaning you are going to be the future rulers of the planet of Earth. You're going to be the dictators of the planet of Earth, governing the Earth under your true power, Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai. And you're going to be dictating the Lord's statutes commandments to the rest of the Earth. You're going to be free again. You're going to be free from alcoholism. You're going to be free from your idolatry. You're going to be free from oppression. You're going to be free from slavery. You're going to be free from the reservations. You're going to be free from darkness. And all the things that um, put you Native Americans in a lower state. You're going to be free from these things in the kingdom of heaven. Isaiah chapter 55 verse 6. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. The Lord is near unto us now. Why? Because his prophets is out there on the highways and byways, waking up our people to who we really are. Telling our people the true names 
of the Great Spirit, telling our people the true name of the Great Spirit's son, which the Great Spirit, true name, his proper name in the Hebrew tongue is Yahweh, and his son name is Yahweh Shai. Okay? Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts, and let him return unto the Lord, and he will have mercy upon him and to our power, for he will abundantly pardon. So the Most High is going to have mercy upon the elect of his people, all right? The ones that come back to who they really are and call upon him and ask for forgiveness. The ones that forsake the ways of this world, forsake the evil of this world, all right? Denounce the evil of this world. All the ways that the world makes it seem like it's righteous, but it's not. But it's evil in the sight of our power, okay? If we forsake these ways and turn back to his ways, which is the Lord's statutes and commandments, and the faith and believing upon his son, Yahweh Shai, he's going to have mercy upon us and deliver us and save us, okay? But the reservation system makes this almost impossible. Following a series of treaties and laws over many decades, some well-intentioned, some not, the federal government decided to hold Indian land, quote, in trust, in order to prevent non-Indians from ever buying that land. But other than Indians, the only people who have things held in trust for them are children and the mentally incompetent. Can anything better illustrate the low regard the government has for American Indians? The awful consequence of this land trust is that Indians can't sell their land, which means they can't use it the same way other Americans do. For example, as collateral to get a loan to start a business. What bank would lend to landowners who don't own their land? The other effect of this absurdity is that Indians can't develop this land that they don't own. Indian reservations contain almost 30% of the nation's coal reserves west of the Mississippi, 50% of potential uranium reserves, and 20% of known oil and gas reserves. Those resources are estimated to be worth nearly $1.5 trillion. But the vast majority of Indian lands with natural resources remain undeveloped because of federal regulations. For instance, for Indians to get permission to mine for coal on Indian land requires 49 steps spanning four federal agencies. Each of these 49 steps can take months or years to be approved. There are so many government regulations that just to apply for a permit to dig a hole cost $6,500. Is it really any wonder that this community is mired in poverty? So what can be done? For starters, end the trust system. Let Indians do what they want with the land they own. Get the massive federal bureaucracy out of the way. Give American Indians the opportunity to embrace the same thing that has lifted millions of other people out of poverty and into the middle class, free enterprise. It won't happen overnight and it won't be easy. But it will do a lot more for American Indians than changing the name of the Washington Redskins. I'm Naomi Schaefer Riley for Prager University. This is the true solution for you indigenous people of North, South, and Central America. Coming back to the scriptures, coming back to the words of the Heavenly Father and His Son, coming back to the Lord's statutes commandments, coming back to the faith, coming back to your heritage, coming back to your Hawa Bashim, Yahweh Shah. Because the kingdom of heaven entails everything that this kingdom is not. Okay? Coming back to peace, pure water, pure food, you being back on top, and the Caucasian man Esau going back on the bottom. All right? You having your own land, you being at peace with your people. Okay? Everything that this world is not everything that this nightmare is not you're going to get in the kingdom of heaven revelations 21 verse 4 and god shall wipe away all tears from their eyes and there shall be no more death neither sorrow nor crying neither shall there be any more pain for the former things are passed away and that's the things we have to look forward to in the kingdom of heaven but first, we have to seek the Lord while he may be found. We have to repent and call upon the true names of the Heavenly Father, the true powers, the, the God of Israel, 
the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, which is our forefathers. Okay? We have to call upon their power, which is Yahweh, and up through his son, Yahweh Shai. Okay? Because in the kingdom of heaven, he's going to wipe away all our tears, and there's going to be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying. Neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. These are the things that's promised to us in the kingdom of heaven. All right? These are the things we have to look forward to because America is a nightmare. As long as this so-called white man, this Caucasian man, Esau, is in rulership, we're going to continue to be in a nightmare. We're going to continue to be strung out on alcohol and drugs and live in poverty. But with that, I hope he was edified. And I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shah. Until next time, I say Shalom.